W5. Pro athlete, devoted family man, and selfless humanitarian. The reason I breathe is to try to help people understand their value. Endures brutal violence and serious charges. Oh my God, what did I do? I didn't do anything. All at the hands of the police. He ends up being victimized by them. Is that true? Rick Westhead with a W5 TSN investigation. The truth wasn't being spoken. One man's steadfast commitment. To take something so horrible and turn it into something so good. His fight for justice. Couldn't understand what happened, why it happened. And the power of compassion. You are forgiven 100%. And a great deal for decades. Beautiful pomegranates from Spain. Open markets and prosperity for the Western world. Yeah, a good 70% is all U.S. product. But now, someone thinks it's a bad idea. We are going to get rid of NAFTA for once and for all. W5, with an exclusive interview on NAFTA's tenuous future. Is this whole thing unraveling before your eyes? Well, it doesn't look promising. What's at stake? It's not going to be nice. Who's at risk? Canada will see higher prices. They'll see job losses. And Canada's fight to keep it together. What happens if NAFTA's ripped up? Everybody has to pay the price. Here is Kevin Newman. Hello, and thanks for joining us for a remarkable story of violence, anguish, but also forgiveness. Orlando Bowen was a hard-hitting Canadian Football League player whose charitable work off the field had a big impact as well. Until one night and an astonishing clash with police. Rick Westhead leads our joint W5 TSN investigation. Just after daybreak, and dozens of high school students are getting fired up for a day of giving back to their community in Brampton, Ontario. Get in, get in, get in. Following the inspirational lead of an ex-pro football player named Orlando Bowen. The reason I breathe is to try to help people understand their value and the fact that they could overcome whatever challenges that they may face. This is what it looks like when... Yeah, yeah, see when you, you cut yes. onions with love yes. and, and with joy and passion in your heart, right? Look, 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 this is what I'm talking about. Everyone has a role to play, yes? Many of the students will spend the morning making and serving breakfast for those in need. We're all gonna face stuff, right? Yeah. Right, different, in different ways, we'll all face different challenges and, but it's about what you do with it. You know what the thing is? Sounds like something's happening upstairs. Let's investigate. Other students will spend the day building homes for Habitat for Humanity. I got you, Abby, I got you. <laughs> it's all a part of Orlando's charity. One voice, one team. When you speak of him, it, it almost, it's one of those things that almost sounds too good, right? Um, but it was just who he was. Canadian Football League legend Mike Pinball Clemens has known Orlando since he first recruited him to come play for the Toronto Argonauts in 2000. When you talk about Orlando Bowen, he's a great teammate. What was he like as a player? What do you remember about, why did you want him on your team? Uh, no one had his energy. No one had the same generosity of spirit. And um, he was, um, he, he's one of a kind. Back in May 2001, Sky Ely was a student teacher at this Brampton, Ontario high school, where Orlando was volunteering as a hall monitor. He invited me at lunch to come share a chicken burger sandwich with him, and then from there, we, uh, the rest is history. In a little more than a year, they were married. A baby boy, Dante, soon followed. Between football and family, life was busy, but Orlando was also a tireless community volunteer. My work centered around empowering others to not be passive bystanders, but to do the right thing and, and encourage others to do the same. He also volunteered his time with the Peel Police Force in a suburb of Toronto, serving as a liaison with the black community. I was doing some, some things around racial sensitivity with them in terms of engaging some of their officers. I was going into schools 
and uh, empowering young people to stand up for the right thing. He is just an extraordinary young man, uh, a, a man who uh, wants to make an impact, who wants to leave a legacy in the community, and not a legacy of being a hero, right, but a legacy of being a servant. By the spring of 2004, Orlando and Skye were expecting their second child. After three seasons with the Argos and a year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando signed a new contract extension. This must have been an amazing time in your lives. Yeah. He had just signed a new contract. You guys have a baby on the way. Yeah. Does life get better than that? Yeah, I mean, I think we had everything planned out. We had a new home, so I felt that we were very secure and, and really had a set plan for where our lives were going. Little did they know the dramatic turn their lives were about to take. On the night of March 26, 2004, everything changes in, a, in an instant. What happened? I signed a contract extension with the Tie Cats and um, was about to go out and celebrate with some of my teammates. The meeting place before heading to downtown Toronto, this parking lot in the suburb of Mississauga. I'm waiting for my friends to come. I'm talking to one of my friends on the phone and I see two guys walking towards me and then one of them says, hey man, what you got, got any drugs? And I looked and I said, no. And I went back to my phone call. And uh, one of them stopped at the rear of the vehicle and says, are you sure you don't have anything? So now I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I stepped back. They grabbed me, they were both armed, grabbed me, trying to get me down to the ground. Did you think you were being mugged? I was convinced that it was a mugging of, of some sort. But it wasn't a mugging. The two men? Plainclothes police officers, Constable Grant Gervais and Constable Sheldon Cook, members of the PO police force that Orlando had been volunteering his time with, and they were putting Orlando under arrest. So the police are trying to subdue you? Yeah, so there was one point in the process where one of the officers was holding on to me and he was, you know, delivering knee strikes to my quad and trying to get my leg to collapse. And he kept saying, I'm gonna break your effing leg. I'm gonna break your effing leg. And I'm saying, oh my God, what did I do? I didn't do anything. He looked at me and then turned to his partner and says, I'm gonna shoot him in the head, I swear to God. You know, I'm face down there on the pavement and I'm thinking, I can't believe my life is gonna end like this. Does time slow down in a moment like that? Time slowed down in that moment for me. Um, because again, you start thinking, what's important. And for me, it was just like, I haven't given all that I have to give. I had all these plans that I hadn't acted on and I, I've got a son and I have a child on the way, an amazing, beautiful bride. And all I could say was, God, not like this. Not like this. Orlando suffered a brutal thrashing at the hands of the police. He had a concussion and multiple wounds to his face, his head, and his back. I actually broke down in tears as soon as I saw him. His injuries were so bad, and even the way that he was walking, he looked defeated. Uh, she was, you know, pretty hysterical and just saying, who could have done this? How could someone do this? And she just kept crying and crying. And I'm trying to console her, but wondering the same, like, like how, how is this possible? And when I saw his face, I really, I really wasn't sure what to think. And I was hurt. You were hurt. And couldn't understand what happened, why it happened. I've, I've never, I've never seen someone look like that f for me in person. I've never seen, and I, 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 I don't know, I really don't care to remember. His injuries were so bad, he was sidelined from playing football for good. My playing days were, were done. It shouldn't be like this, but that was our reality. And that reality just kept getting worse. Not only had Orlando been badly beaten, he was facing criminal charges, including two counts of assault with intent to resist arrest. I was sure that he was innocent. 
and I felt like, how can this happen to someone who loves people this much, who's this compassionate, who actually did training for the force, right? What's more, Orlando was facing yet another charge, possession of a controlled substance, cocaine. He has never even been around those types of things for that to even be a, a consideration, and it, it was a nightmare. Absolutely impossible. Yeah, because it, it was an unfathomable situation to be in. But it was real. Police under suspicion. One of the police officers was essentially corrupt. And unanswered accusations. I don't have any comment to make at this time. When W5 continues. In June 2005, Orlando Bowen was on trial, facing charges of possession of a controlled substance, cocaine, and two charges of assaulting police with intent to resist arrest, even though he had endured a brutal beating at the hands of two police officers. So that photograph, Exhibit 4B, yeah. is uh, supposed to be the substantial injury you cause when you sucker punch your bay. David Humphrey was Orlando's lawyer. What do you remember about Orlando's state of mind when he first came to you? He just couldn't believe that he found himself in this situation. He was very active volunteering with the Peel police, uh, and he just couldn't believe that as someone who was trying to play that positive role and support the police, uh, he ends up being victimized by them and then falsely charged. The defense's theory, the officers mistook Orlando for a drug dealer. But after he was assaulted, no drugs were found. So the cocaine was planted on him to cover up the unlawful search and assault. It's an extraordinary thing to accuse a police officer of having drugs to plant on an innocent citizen and then actually doing it. That's extraordinary. Um, it would mean that at least one of the police officers uh, had access to uh, cocaine um, and was essentially corrupt. So when you're in court, yeah. what's it like hearing the two officers who are testifying against you? Well, there were certain points where um, like the, the, the conflicting evidence was so significant that I, I was kind of looking around like, okay, can we go home now? Um, because it's, it was so clear that the truth wasn't being spoken. Those two officers, Constable Grand Gervais and Constable Sheldon Cook, testified that Orlando had started the fight with a sucker punch, but Humphrey called that into question. The Crown introduced photographs at trial of Gervais. There was some marking or minor swelling around, I think, his left eye, uh, but it certainly didn't look consistent with the type of injury one would expect if a powerful man like Orlando had just sucker punched this officer. And you would think if, a, again, if a sucker punch were uh, thrown by Orlando, landing in the face of the officer in the area of the eye, you'd expect some marking on his hands. But when you looked at the photographic evidence, his knuckles and his hands were completely unmarked. Not a mark on his hands. There were photographs of injuries on hands, but that was the photograph of Gervais' hands. Gervais had marks all over his hands, cuts, he was bleeding uh, on his right hand. And of course, Orlando had photographs of injuries to his face, the forehead and uh, big fat lip. And that wasn't the only part of the police testimony that Humphrey attacked in court. He focused on the officer's seemingly contradictory versions of what Orlando was doing with his right hand at the time of the arrest. Gervais says Orlando has his phone in his right hand and that he, according to Gervais, is talking on the phone, held in his right hand, the entire time that Gervais is dealing with him. Officer Cook says he sneaks up behind the two. Orlando doesn't know he's there and Orlando then takes that same right hand and 
uh, puts it down his pants, pulls out a bag of drugs, and drops it behind him. According to the officer's testimony, Orlando also managed to land that sucker punch at around the same time. One officer is saying that Orlando was on the phone using his right hand right. the entire time. The entire time. And the other officer says he used that right hand to sucker punch the officer. To reach for the drugs, to drop the drugs, and then as well to sucker punch the officer. So that was a busy right hand, particularly when Gervais says that hand was holding a phone the whole time. So at this time, I'm like, hold on. Am I Jackie Chan? Like, I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I had that type of skill. And there was more. Humphrey also highlighted the officer's different versions of events when it came to the recovery of the drugs. Gervais says, I never picked up an eight ball of cocaine until we had subdued Orlando, picked him up off the ground, and Cook left the scene. Cook says, before I left the scene, Gervais showed me an eight ball of cocaine. As the contradictions in the officer's testimony mounted, Humphrey did something he's never done in his 32 years of practicing law. He wrote to the Crown, the prosecutors, suggesting the charges against Orlando be immediately dropped. Well, what was the Crown's response? We think we have a case. We're prosecuting it to the end. But the credibility of the police testimony was about to suffer an even more shocking and devastating blow. Sheldon Cook had been arrested uh, by the RCMP. Constable Sheldon Cook, a 14-year veteran of the Peel Police Force, was facing multiple criminal charges, including attempt to possess an illegal substance, cocaine, for the purpose of trafficking. It was almost the ultimate vindication when Cook was arrested. We said he was a liar. We said he was dirty. We said he was corrupt. And it's hard to imagine better evidence of that than what Sheldon Cook gave us. Shortly after news of Cook's arrest was made public, the judge in Orlando's case made his ruling. And he said, having reviewed my careful notes of the evidence given by these officers, I've come to the conclusion that they are incredible and unworthy of belief. The officer's testimony had been completely discredited. Orlando was acquitted. An unforgettable moment for his wife, Skye, and all his supporters. When they, that judge made that ruling and said he was acquitted of all charges, there were tears of joy from everybody in that courtroom. It was just one of those rare but wonderful moments in court where a deserving client got uh, the right result. I did feel relief for myself, for my family, but I had a problem with people saying, congratulations, you won. We shouldn't have been in this situation in the first place. With the trial and his football career over, Orlando focused on his growing family. But at times, he remained unsettled. It wasn't until 10 years after his arrest that Orlando realized what he needed to do to be fully at peace. He wrote a public letter of forgiveness to the officers. As I started writing, my hand couldn't keep up with the thoughts that were flowing and the tears started streaming. This letter's from my brothers, Sheldon and Grant. I come to you humble and broken, yet with a calming peace. I apologize for blaming you for my feelings of anger and disappointment and malintent towards you, towards life, and towards the system during this whole ordeal. This may sound strange to you, but in this game of life, we're actually on the same team. Please know that you are forgiven 100% and loved 99%. I'm still working on that last 1% today. Orlando has never received a response from either officer. Grant Gervais is still with Peel Police. He's now a sergeant. We asked to speak with him, but a request was declined. Instead, Sergeant Josh Colley spoke on behalf of the police force. Orlando Bowen says that during his arrest that he was beaten up and that drugs were planted on him. What does the Peel Police say about those allegations? At the time the allegations were made, an independent internal review was done by uh, some senior officers into his claim. 
They looked at all the evidence, they spoke to everyone involved, and they determined that there was nothing against the policies and procedures, and the officers acted appropriately during the incident. During the criminal trial for Orlando Bowen, the judge in the case said that the officer's testimony was incredible and not worthy of belief. With the judge's comments and his decision, we did conduct an internal review after the fact for a second time and again found that there was no misconduct in relation to Mr. Bowen's incident. So Orlando Bowen was unarmed. He had no record or history of violence. He was in fact a community liaison with this very PO police force. And yet, I want you to take a look at a couple of photos of how he appeared after he was arrested. What's your reaction to that? Does that look like a typical arrest? Absolutely not. Uh, obviously, Mr. Bowen suffered some injuries during that arrest, uh, but also the officers suffered injury as well. Photos don't depict everything. Um, the fact is that the officers went in to make an arrest. There was a struggle, there was resistance, and as a result, everyone was injured. So it's the position of the Peel Police Force then that nothing went wrong during this arrest? We stand by the officers' actions at the time um, of that incident that they were within, within um, their, their right as a police officer and our policies and procedures. As for Sheldon Cook, he eventually resigned from the Peel Police Force after being convicted on several charges related to the RCMP's investigation. He was sentenced to five years and eight months in prison. He now earns a living as a landlord, renting out these properties in Kitchener, Ontario. That's where we caught up with him. Rick Westhead from CTV's W5 and TSN. Will you take a minute and talk to me about Orlando Bowen? I don't have any comment to make at this time. I think he had called me yesterday. One of our colleagues did. He's written a letter of forgiveness, which is pretty extraordinary in the circumstances. What yeah. do you think of that? Well, I think it's very, uh, I think it's pretty big of him, but uh, you know, I appreciate that and I've forgiven him as well. For what have you forgiven him for? Well, at this point, I don't think there's anything further I could comment on, but uh, I appreciate your time. He says okay. that he says that during the arrest, the drugs were planted on him and he was assaulted. And Is that true? I never actually got down to uh, figuring out the truth of that matter, but I really don't have any other comment at this time. You're saying that's not true? No other comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So many people would have wound up with hate towards those officers. Life is short, man. Life is precious. Let's use what we have, the time that we have, the gifts that we have to uplift one another. Did you ever hate them? I don't know if I have it in me to, to hate. I hated the situation that we were in. Adversity, things that happen in our life don't necessarily change us as much as they show the real person. So. Orlando was already that special person. This has illuminated it for so many. It's the spring of 2017, and Orlando is back doing what he loves the most. It's not about what you have, don't have, where you've been, where you want to go. It's about how you process those things. Inspiring and challenging young people, imploring them to strive to believe in the power of unity and community service. We have an opportunity today to make a decision to be one of those people who stands up and is a game changer for others and creates opportunities for others because we can't get through this game of life by ourselves. To be able to take something so horrible and turn it into something so good is just, it makes me really proud and very honored to be his wife. I'm just here to help to make sure that people understand that despite what they have been through, really in light of what they've been through, they can empower and, and make a difference in other people's lives. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What's the matter? Well, in 2006, Orlando Bowen filed a $14 million civil suit against Peel Police. It was settled out of court. Here's what's straight ahead. If it isn't broken, we're going to make some very big changes. Why fix it? It's good for everybody right now. When W5 continues.